After studying this module, you shall be able to know about various types of automobile accidents, primary and secondary impact injuries as well as secondary injuries, pattern of injuries in pedestrians when hit by a four-wheeler and a two-wheeler vehicle, then pattern of injuries in drivers of a four-wheeler and two-wheeler vehicle, then pattern of injuries in occupants of a four-wheeler and two-wheeler vehicles because in all these it will be different as well as the medical legal importance of automobile injuries. To begin with, I'll quote from Mahatma Gandhi, there is more to life than simply increasing its speed. A large variety of injuries are sustained by persons involved in traffic accidents and as per the uh, data, the World Health Organization data, India ranks third in number of fatalities all over the world. If you see the pattern of injuries, it can be divided into injury to pedestrians and injury to occupants as well as injury to drivers. So let us first see the injury to pedestrians. Three types of injuries are seen, the primary impact injuries, the secondary impact injuries and the secondary injuries. The primary impact injuries are caused by initial strike when the first part of the vehicle that strikes the victim that is usually they are found on the legs. Then secondary impact injuries after the primary impact the victim is then again thrown back over the vehicle causing further injuries. These are called as secondary impact injuries. Then secondary injuries what happens when afterwards the victim is thrown on the ground and that causes the secondary injuries. And finally the victim is run over by the vehicle causing crush injuries. Primary impact injuries, the part of the body is struck depends upon the position of the person in relation to the vehicle is struck. So there can be various possibilities. Like when the pedestrian is struck from behind, both feet are fixed to the ground. So whether feet is fixed or not, it depends on the nature of the road surface, whether slippery or not, whether it has rained or not, all these. So the injuries produced are the bumper injuries, that is the common one, injuries at the site of bumper impact in form of abrasion, contusion, laceration, internal hemorrhage in the calf muscles. The most characteristic fracture due to bumper fractures are the fracture of the tibia. The fracture fragments are wedge shaped and is displayed forwards. The wedge indicates the site of the impact, the apex point in the direction in which the vehicle was traveling. Rarely, fibula also may get fractured. If the bumper fractures are on a different levels on the both legs, then indicates that, that the victim was either running or walking. In children, however, the bumper fracture is seen in femur. The femoral head may be driven through the acetabulum. The vehicle can be identified from the height of the bumper fracture from the ground and matching the same with the offending vehicle's height of bumper from the ground. When brakes are applied, the height of the bumper dips down Thus, the height of the bumper fracture is less than height of the bumper. When accelerator is pressed, the phenomena is reversed. Then impact against the mud guard or the headlamp. This will cause fracture of the pelvis, pubic rami fracture, fracture dislocation of the sacroiliac joints, imprint abrasions due to headlamps and radiators. The injuries usually depend how the victim was positioned. Frontal impacts may cause head injury, chest injury, fracture of the ribs. The side impact causes injuries of the arms. The rear impact causes injury to buttocks and sacroiliac joints. The fractured portion of vertebral column may move forward and may cause transaction of the spinal cord and thoracic aorta. Then when the pedestrian is struck from behind, when the feet are not firmly fixed with the car at high speed, this situation arises when the victim is walking. So if one leg is lifted, fracture is often transverse. Then when the pedestrian is struck from the front, the injuries are virtually the same except that the injuries are more on the frontal aspect. The intra-abdominal injuries are seen like linear superficial uh, tears of the abdomen and inguinal regions due to overstretching of the skin. They appear dry, yellow and bloodless. The liver and splenic injuries are common. There may be injuries to chest wall and thoracic contents. The direct impact to thorax may cause rupture of the aorta below the arch at the level of ligamentum arteriosum due to sudden increase in the intravascular pressure. 
the heart may show bruising, laceration as well as rupture. Then when the person is struck on one side, the injuries are seen predominantly on that particular side. The opposite side receives injuries while falling on the road. When the person is struck on front corner of the car, so the person is knocked diagonally out of the path of the car and may be run over by the other cars coming from behind. When the pedestrian walks into the side of the moving vehicle, there may be injuries on the side of the front of face, chest and arms in the form of glancing abrasions, pattern abrasions, crust lacerations, tear lacerations, fractured ribs with or without lung involvement as well as abdominal injuries. Now let's see what are secondary impact injuries. If the feet slide forwards, the whole body falls backwards with the secondary impact of the head against the windshield. If the victim falls on the hood, tangential force is directed by hood to the buttocks and thigh causing separation of the skin and subcutaneous tissues from the muscle. This produces a pocket in the upper thigh and buttocks leading to collection of large amount of blood which is often not visible externally. If the feet is not firmly fixed on the ground, the victim may be scooped up and thrown in the air and may land over the roof of the vehicle, head hitting first or may even land on the road behind the vehicle where he may be run over by the other vehicles. Atlanto occipital dislocation and partial disruption of intervertebral disc are quite common in this situation. Then thirdly, the secondary injuries. Due to striking of the victim on ground, it may be caused after secondary impact injuries or immediately after primary impact injuries when the victim is thrown high up in the air and strikes the ground. All kind of injuries including abrasion, contusion, laceration, fractures all may be seen. Then finally run over injuries. Abrasions in the form of grazes, impact or impaint abrasions of the tire marks may be seen. They are spread out a little due to yielding and flattening of the body from pressure. The rotator effect against a fixed limb may strip off almost all the tissues down to the bone causing avulsion laceration. The avulsed wound may be segmental or circumferential completely encircling the arm or leg. If the head is involved, the complete avulsion of the ear may occur. If the intestine or scrotum are involved, they may be extruded out. Head injury with egg shelling of the skull, this may be there where the skull is crushed from side to side or forced open with extrusion of the brain matter. The ribs may be fractured at multiple places. The abdomen may be ruptured with extrusion of its contents. The whole body may be crushed or may be hemisected if the vehicle is very heavy and passes through the middle of the body. The legs may be crushed. Brush burns may be seen due to dragging of the body. Then rolling over of the injuries. This is produced when a vehicle with low chases rolls the victim along the roadway instead of running him over. Injuries produced are abrasions like graze, pattern abrasions which are caused by the undersurface of the chases, burns from exhaust system, fractures, swelling of garments and skin by grease. These injuries will present circumferentially all around the body. Then injuries to the vehicle occupants, soft pedestrians, now we see the pattern of injuries in the vehicle occupants. Usually upon the type of impact, it can be two types, non-injection and ejection injuries. That means when the person is thrown out or when he is in, remains inside the vehicle. Non-ejection injuries, then there can be several possibilities like frontal impact. This is the most common and about 80% of the injuries are frontal impact. The sequence of events upon frontal impact is that the driver and passengers receive some common and some different set of injuries. Let's see the drivers. In the drivers, in this during secondary incident, accident, what happens? The driver, if not wearing seat belt, slide forward so that his legs strike the instrument and the dashboard area and his chest and lower abdomen strikes the lower edge of the steering wheel. This is known as second collision. The first collision is the one between the vehicle and the outside object. Facial impact on the windscreen causing imprint abrasions, bruises, fractured jaws as well as facial bones. Then flexion across the steering wheel, the body flexes across the steering wheel and begins to rise causing steering wheel injuries on the chest and abdomen like chest contusion, bilateral fracture of the ribs or the liver laceration. Then flexion of the spine. 
the head goes forwards causing flexion of the cervical and thoracic spine it is followed by hyperextension resulting in whiplash injuries the upward and forward component of the force of impact causes the head to strike the wind screen then there are airbag injuries although airbags decrease the incidence of fatal injuries they themselves also may cause serious injuries at least one airbag related injury occurs in every 43% of airbags deployed this injury is common in adults with short stature and children majority of the injuries are minor for example lacerations and abrasion over the skin and eyes the fatal injuries may be seen in the children sitting in the passenger seat the fatal injuries are caused by impact of chest against the airbag the multiple rib fracture with bilateral hemothorax subdural hemorrhage laceration of pericardium and right atrium hemopericardium retropharyngeal hematoma with airway obstruction all these may be seen the non fatal lesions are seen in the form of ocular injuries it is caused due to the impact of face against airbag or projection of any object leading to contusion abrasion or laceration of the face the orthopedic injuries in upper and lower limbs for lateral airbags fracture of the ribs sternum pulmonary contusions cardiac trauma spinal lesions they are all less common forearms especially the distal third may be involved then there may be injuries due to deceleration and this includes a variety of thoracic injuries when the moving thorax decelerates rapidly as a result of impact against a stationary or relatively stationary object here they are not peculiar to the driver only and can be seen in in all vehicle occupants like aortic injuries they are classic in deceleration injuries the location of the aortic injuries are usually in the aortic isthmus a few centimeters distal to the ostium of the left subclavian artery this is most frequently seen in frontal and near side crashes where a large magnitude of force is being involved there may be aortic rupture the myocardial injuries tracheobronchial disruption etc in aortic rupture which is circular clean cut appear sharp as if transected with knife there are called ladder tears the multiple transverse intimal tears adjacent to the main rupture in heart there occurs contusions lacerations contusion of the pericardium and myocardium without fracture of the ribs avulsion and laceration of the chambers of heart the tracheobronchial disruption bruising of the lungs especially on the posterior aspect occurs due to blunt impact and two or more deceleration injuries are almost fatal then seat belt injuries seat belts also reduce the risk of death by 40% by keeping away from the potentially hazardous object like steering wheel and wind screen and also spreads the deceleration force over the broad surface area of the strap although it reduces this risk of the aortic injury the same is not true for the side impact crashes seat belt syndrome this is caused by lap strap belts the frontal collusion where the driver is forced forwards violently then jack knifes over the lap belt at the waist the injuries sustained are surface injury to abdomen injury to abdominal organs at the mid lumbar level omental and mesenteric lacerations lacerations of the abdominal organs fracture and dislocation of the thoracic and lumbar vertebra and spinal damage causing the paralysis the most characteristic triad of injuries associated with rapid deceleration against a fixed fulcrum is spinal trauma seat belt aorta and bowel injuries and this is caused by modern three point belts these are developed to minimize the seat belt syndrome however even though the abdominal injuries are reduced the diagonal strap induced introduced new injuries it contributes to the hyperflexion and hyperextension of the neck leading to the fracture of cervical and upper thoracic vertebra carotid laceration tracheal transduction injury to the brachial plexus as well as accidental strangulation in children then under running a small vehicle following a large vehicle may run under the large vehicle which is which is also called as tailgating like truck running at a high speed and suddenly stopping in front of the large vehicle this causing severe crushing of the car the occupants may receive severe crush injuries and in case if tailgating vehicle is a motorcycle then head and shoulder of the rider are smashed against the tailboard 
and in extreme cases even de decapitation may also occur. The front seat occupants the same se sequence as in driver except that steering wheel injuries will not be there and rather injuries will be by the dashboard that will be seen. In case of back seat occupants, mechanism of injury is usually violent deceleration. No seat belt injuries will be present. Most commonly injuries are sustained over head and knees due to the head striking the front of seat and the headrest. Sometimes the victim may be thrown over the front seat and strike the front structure of the car or even ejected outside. Then what happens from side impact? So this is the second most common type of vehicular injuries after frontal collision. Seen when the offending vehicle strikes the sides of the victim's vehicle or the vehicle skid sideways and hits a fixed object. The occupants sitting on the struck side is injured the most. Generally the injuries are very severe as the side of the car has very thin metal plate and usually no other component are preset to absorb the shock. Then dicing injuries. When the driver or occupant impacts the tempered glass windows of the vehicles used during the crash, the glass breaks into fragment cubes or dice shapes. These may cause dicing injuries over the face, shoulder and arms. These are small linear V-shaped or sometimes irregular cuts, lacerations or abrasions. The driver will have dicing injuries on the right side of the body whereas the passenger will have them on the left side of the body. Then third possibility is the rear impact. They are least common form of fatal automobile accidents and unless impact is of very high speed, the fatalities are rare. The injuries which may be sustained are again whiplash injuries, fracture cervical vertebra or burns in case of high velocity injuries. This cause deformation of the rupture of the petrol tank as well as sometimes dicing injuries. Then ejection injuries. Injection injuries are very dangerous and fatal. The victim may sustain head injury by striking the head against road, divider, poles, any stationary object or may sustain injuries over the projecting surface like knees, elbows. Now let's see the medical legal importance. Most commonly they are accidental in nature, all kind of transportation injuries. Suicidal automobile incidents or accidents are rare but we uh, hear quite frequently. Sometimes they are masqueraded as accidents in order to get insurance claims by the family. The homicidal motives can also be present behind hit and run cases. Some accidents may be faked to conceal the crime. For example, the person may be killed by some other means and then later on an accident is staged in order to conceal the original cause of death. Then let's see the motorcycle accidents. Motorcycle riders are eight times more prone to have injuries per vehicle per mile traveled and the fatalities of injuries in times of crash are 34 times higher risk of death than other vehicles. Again there can be the possibilities like when the person is riding single vehicle accidents, the motorcycle may slide, overturn and finally pin the rider. The rider may be ejected out or catapulted out either alone or along with the rider. Injuries sustained are typically primary impact, secondary impact and secondary injuries, all three will be there. Fracture of the bones, especially open fracture of long bones, graze abrasions, head injuries which are the leading cause of death, especially when the person has not worn the helmet, ring fractures commonly seen because of the impact of crown of head upon vertebral column and then the motorcyclist fracture, the classical feature seen due to falling on the ground. A transverse crack is seen across the middle cranial fossa behind the greater wing of spinoid phones, crosses the pituitary fossa to reach the opposite side. It thus divides the skull roughly into two halves, an interior and posterior, which can be moved independently against each other like a hinge, so also called as hinge fracture. And this is common in both driver as well as pillion rider. The brain matter may extrude out through those fractured fragments. Then injury to the lower extremities are the uh, most common site of injury and the tibia is the most commonly fractured bone followed by femur, foot bones and patella. The femoral fractures are the most common uh, long bone injury in motorcycle deaths. Then there may be run over if it is done by the another speeding vehicle. And the strangulation may be there, of course rare, but it may be there due to pull of the helmet string around the neck. Then if 
the vehicle collides with other vehicle. That means if the motorcycle collides with other vehicle. So there can be injuries to the driver. Again, the primary, all three uh, varieties of injuries, the primary impact injuries, there may be disarticulation of the limb, more severe lesions like lung contusion, rupture and separation of the heart from aorta, rupture of abdominal viscera, chest and abdominal injuries are the second most common injuries in fatal motorcycle crashes. There may be tailgating of the vehicle along with the rider. Then secondary impact injuries, the head injuries, when secondary impact is on the colliding vehicle. When secondary impact is due to projection of the own vehicle, then large lacerations on the groin and legs are seen and the laceration of the internal organs by impact of the handlebars that leads to internal hemorrhage. The secondary injuries when person is thrown on the ground, there may be burns, crush injury of the head, facial injuries, thoracic spine injuries, cervical spine injuries as well. Then injuries to the pillion rider. As the pillion rider falls back from the motorcycle, there may be fracture, posterior cranial fossa, abrasions and lacerations of the back, especially the projecting parts, contra coup contusions of the frontal lobes. Accidental striking of a pedestrian. Injuries suffered by the pedestrian are same as those found when a pedestrian is struck by the four wheelers. Then the bicycle accidents. Usually such accidents are due to inexperience in riding a bicycle or callousness on behalf of the rider. The rider loses control over the cycle and falls on the ground. Uh, generally, they are mild, but occasionally there may be associated fracture of long bones and severe soft tissue trauma. Extensive graze abrasions may occur. Collision with a motor vehicle will cause both primary impact when he is struck by the vehicle and secondary injuries when he is struck by the pavement and also by his own vehicle. Bicycle spoke injuries are occur when the foot of a passenger, usually a child, is caught in between the spokes of a rotating wheel. There are abrasions, laceration and crushing of the foot. The right foot is commonly involved as it is usually closer to the wheel in side saddle position. To summarize this topic of transportation injuries, the automobile injuries basically, the primary impact injuries are caused by the initial strike, that is the first part of the vehicle that is strikes the victim, usually legs. Then the part of the body struck depends upon the position of the person in relation to the vehicle struck. In children, bumper fracture is seen in femur, while in adults, it involves tibia. The rotator effect against a fixed limb may strip off almost all tissues down to the bone, causing evulsion laceration, like in runover accidents. The fatal injuries may be seen in children sitting in passenger seat. Fatal injuries are caused by impact of chest against the airbag. The driver of two-wheeler may suffer motorcyclist fracture, the tailgating, under tractor fractures, all those. The injuries caused by pedestrian are same as those found when a pedestrian is stuck by four wheelers.